Hi, in this video, we'll talk about collections topic in Java. So we'll see one by one. So first we'll talk about variable. So what do you mean by variable? A variable is a named reference to a memory area where value of the variable is stored. So if you want to store some variable, some values, you can use variables. So if I want to store 10 here, so I'll use int i is equals to 10. So in this data type, i is equals to variable name, 10 is actual value, which I want to store in the memory. So this is how you will store the value. But here it will store only one value, right? Only 10 I, I, I can store. So if I want to store more than one value, so variables will not useful for that purpose. So variable can hold only one value. So if you want to store or hold more than one value, so what will you do? So will depends upon the arrays, right? Arrays are objects which store multiple variables of same type that are referred by a common name. So that we already discussed in detail in our one, hour, one of our previous videos arrays. So this is just a definition that it can hold or store multiple variables of same data type. Okay, so if this is an array, I stored 5, 15, 26, 45, 85, 124, 56, 25, 63, 3, these many values. So 10 values. So, and these values can be represented using index from zero to how many values you have that, that many. So it will start from the index zero. So here zero to nine means I have 10 values. I hold 10 values in this array, right? So we can hold one value. We can hold multiple values. Right, we have two provisions. With the help of variable, you can store one value. With the help of arrays, you can store more than one variable. Okay, then why will why we need to talk about collections here? Right, what collections exactly? So before jumping into the collection, we'll see what are the uh, drawbacks of arrays. So limitations of arrays. Okay, so if you know limitations of arrays, then we'll jump into the collections. What are the advantages over arrays? And we can discuss one by one in detail. So arrays are fixed in size. So we cannot increase or decrease the size of the array according to our requirements, right? So we already discussed all these things. So arrays is fixed in size while initializing itself, you need to mention how many values you are going to store. Means the requirement you should know in advance, right? So once you declare, you cannot increase or decrease the array size. So that is one of the limitations. To use arrays, we should know the size of the array in advance, right? So because of that, we cannot increase or decrease the size. Arrays can hold only homogene homogeneous data type of elements, homogeneous. So homogeneous means only same kind of data. If you want to store only, uh, you can store only integer values. You can store only string values. So whatever it is the data type, you can store only that kind of data type in the array. So you can create int array, you can create string array, you can create Boolean array, okay? So same kind of data uh, elements you can store in an array. Arrays are not implemented based on any standard data structures. So no ready-made methods available need to write our own logic to fulfill our requirements. It increases the complexity of the programming. So what do you mean by it's not implemented on any data structures means? So underlying there is no data structure because of that, if you want to perform some operation on arrays, I want to sort an array, okay? So I cannot sort directly. There is no readily available method to implement on this array. So if you want to sort an array, you need to write your own logic to sort that array, right? So if you want to do that, you need to write so much of code. So it increases the complexity of the program, okay? So th these are all the few limitations of arrays. So to overcome these problems, Java introduced collections concept, okay? So we have seen variable, we have seen arrays. And when you come to the collections, those two are not you know, sufficient our purpose, our requirement according to our requirements, it is not sufficient. So because of that, they introduce collections. So what do you mean by collection? So collection is to represent a group of individual objects as a single entity. So the same thing, it can hold multiple values. Right, collection is to represent a group of individual objects as a single entity. So if you want to represent an, as a diagram, you can see here. So the entire thing is a collection. This is the blue color is collection. So inside the collection, it holds multiple values. Those are objects. You see one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight objects it holds. So to represent a group of individual objects as a single entity, that is called collection. In simple terms, it can hold multiple values. So that is called collection. So what is what is collections framework? Okay, there is another word called collections framework. So what is that? The Java collections framework provides a set of interfaces and classes to implement various data structures and algorithms. So we are talking about collection, collection, collection. So collection is to represent a group of individual objects, a single entity. But to achieve that collection, how you can achieve that? So for that, we have multiple interfaces and classes that combinedly, collectively called as collections framework. Okay. So in our next videos, we will talk about all collections, interfaces, and classes in detail. So we are talking about there are few limitations to arrays. So what is the advantage when you go for collections? Okay. Collections are global in nature. So we can increase or decrease the size based on our requirement. So here, no need to provide the collection size in advance in the runtime, whenever you're using you can increase or decrease. So collections are global in nature. Okay. Means it is dynamic. And collections can hold ho both homogeneous and heterogeneous elements. Homogeneous means same kind of data types. Heterogeneous means combination of means. You can store at a time integer, string, boolean, combinations of these elements you can store in collection. Okay. So every collection is implemented based on some standard data structure. So we have ready-made available methods for each requirement. We just need to use the suitable method according to our requirement. So every collection is implemented based on some standard data structure. So if you want to sort the collection, okay, then no need to write your own logic. So you have readily available methods you can directly implement those methods on your collection and you can achieve whatever you are expecting. Okay, that is the advantage when you go with collections. So now we talk about the uh, difference between arrays and collections. So when you talk about these differences, as we already discussed, arrays are fixed in size, right? Fixed in size with respect to memory, arrays are not recommended to use, right? We don't know how much elements we are going to store. So because of that, with respect to the memory, so with respect to the memory, arrays are not recommended to use. With respect to performance, arrays are recommended to use. Okay, if you know how much, uh, how many objects are you going to store, okay? If you know that you know, in advance, then go with arrays, then performance will be improved. So arrays can hold both primitives and objective objects. Okay, it can hold primitives and objects. Arrays concept is not implemented based on any standard data structure. So ready-made methods are not available. Okay, so these are all when you talk about arrays. So collections are growable in nature. Right. So you can increase in the runtime dynamically you can increase. With respect to memory, collections are recommended to use. So opposite. With respect to the performance, collections are not recommended to use. Right. So opposite of arrays. But collections can hold only objects. So here, arrays can hold primitives and objects, but collections can only hold objects. Collections implemented based on some standard data structure. So ready-made methods are available. Right, so ready-made methods are available. So that is the basic differences between arrays and collections. So if you see the collection collections in detail as a diagram, so you can see that parent on the top level interface is collection. The name itself is a collection. So this is the parent interface. So from this, there are three interfaces implemented, means child interfaces, list, set, queue. Okay, list, set, and queue, these three child interfaces under collection. So when you talk about a list, under list, we have multiple implemented classes are there. So these are classes. So those are array list, linked list, vector, and stack. 
So these four are implemented this list interface, right? So when you're coming to the set, set you have uh, two child classes means one, one is class, one is interface. Has set, sorted set. Sorted set again, it is an interface. Under that you have two more classes, navigable set, tree set. These are classes implemented this sorted set. Here has set and linked has set. This is child class of this has set class. Okay. So coming to the queue, queue has multiple classes. One is priority queue and blocking queue. Under the blocking queue, you have two more classes. Those are priority blocking queue, linked blocking queue. So these are all comes under collection interface. Okay, these are all child of collection interface. So let me clear this. So this is one part of collections framework. So apart from collection, we have one more called map. Okay, map is also part of collections framework. So map is parent interface. So under that you have multiple interfaces. Those are hash map, weak hash map, identity hash map, sorted map is the interface and hash table is a class. Okay. So hash map has one more interface called linked hash map. So under the sorted map, you have one, two more interfaces called navigable map, tree map. So under the uh, hash, hash table comes under from the dictionary also. This is abstract class. So hash table is class. Under this, we have one more class called properties. Okay, this is the hierarchy of map interface. Hash map, weak hash map, identity hash map, sorted map, and hash table. Okay. So apart from these collection and map, we have few more things under the collections framework. So those are utility classes in collections. Okay. So what are utility classes? The utility classes consist exclusively of static methods that operate on or written collections. Means if you want to perform some specific um, operations on collections. Okay. So some operations and collections, then you can use these collections utilities. So we'll discuss all these things whenever uh, we, we, we need to use. So, but inside the collections arrays, we have some static methods, static methods, which are helpful to perform some operations. So readily available methods we are discussing that right? those, we can get it from this utility classes. Like apart from the uh, in uh, what is like implemented classes, so here also you you will get some uh, utility methods, which are very handy when you write programs. Okay, so and then sorry. Let me clear this. So when you talk about uh, another one, so cursors in collections, okay? We have uh, utility classes, it's the same way you have cursors. So if you want to get objects or elements one by one, one by one from the collection, okay? If I want to get elements or objects one by one from the collection, then we use, then we should use cursors. In the cursors, we have three types of cursors. One is enumerator, one is iterator, Another one is list iterator. So three are interfaces. Okay, with the help of these things, we can iterate over the collection and we can get one by one element. Okay. So we have one more. What is that? Sorting in collections. Okay. So to sort, Java provides two interfaces to sort objects using data members of the class. Those are comparable comparator. Both are interfaces with the help of these uh, collections, we can interfaces, we can sort the collections. Okay. So collectively, what are those? We can say, so collection interface. Okay. And it's sailed map utility classes, cursors, the sorting, 
So all these things collectively called collections in Java. The collections framework. It includes all these things. Okay. So we'll talk about each and everything in detail in our upcoming videos. So here just theory about what is collection, collections framework, what is the advantage when you go with collection framework, and what are all comes under collection framework. Okay. So let me clear this. So what are the possible interview questions from this topic? So what is collection in Java? What is collections framework in Java? What is the difference between arrays and collection? Name few of the collections, I mean, collection interfaces and classes, which you know. What are utility classes? What are cursors? What are sorting interfaces in Java? So you may face these kind of interview questions. Okay. So this is all about collections introduction. That's all in this video. Thank you.